Dang, Phaedra, you fought the good fight, sis. You absolutely fought the good fight down to the end. You just, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't fight no more. You couldn't fight no more. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks Traders USA Season 2, Episode 10. I'm still here, y'all. Still recapping. I have been sick. You can hear it in my voice still. I still don't have a voice. I have a whole ENT situation going on. So I missed last week, but I did watch it. And I absolutely loved when Phaedra read Peter for filth. Okay? I loved it. I haven't liked Peter whatsoever so imagine my joy when this episode started off with mj voting for peter to leave all right if you haven't already don't forget subscribe to the channel thumbs up the video if you enjoyed this particular piece of content and hop in the comment section with your thoughts okay so as we know the last episode ended off where it was deadlocked MJ had the deciding vote. MJ has a history on this show of not making good decisions, okay? MJ fumbled uh, getting Dan up out of there a couple times. MJ also fumbled something else. But in my opinion, because I don't like Peter, she did right by voting Peter out. Um, she said that there was just more evidence going in Peter's direction of being a traitor than it was... Um, to Phaedra, that's simply not true. But MJ has, has proven she's not the brightest. So Trishel is pissed. Trishel is low-key scared. Because, you know, Trishel says every episode, I'm going home tonight. I'm going home tonight. And now your fool ass is still here, okay? The way Phaedra drank that water when Peter got voted out and was just... Like, not a care in the world. Well, Phaedra, shit it did is laugh. Because, like, Phaedra, you know you're next. So... Trishel is talking to CT and she's saying, well, I'm probably going home, but she is dead set on thinking Phaedra is the traitor. Dan ruined this game. This is why. Nobody suspected Phaedra at all. I feel like the game would be that much more fun and interesting if Dan would have never thrown Phaedra's name under the bus. Because when Dan was on the hot seat, it was between Dan and poverty for him to even throw Phaedra under the bus like that. I feel like changed the, the entire dynamic of the game. You spoon fed who all the traders were. So Trishel said that she's, uh, I'm sorry. So then CT is like trying to make um, MJ feel bad for how she voted. And I'm like, no, nah, don't do that. Because CT, you have been a part of the voting with the masses and voting faithfuls out. Now, MJ, you did fumble the bag with this one. You did. Because now y'all have very limited time to figure out who the other traitor is. CT says that even though Phaedra has been good to him, he thinks she's a traitor and you thinks right, okay? So they got the little traitor link up that night and they're laughing at how long-winded John is. John is, though. John will be like, they'll be like, Phaedra, Phaedra, Peter, Phaedra. John is like, well, the way that you walk under darkness is going to, you know, you're this. You're the, the disciple of deception, the master of manipulation. And it's like, John. We don't have time for all that, bro. Go to say who you're going to vote for. He is very long-winded. He is very theatrical. And I think it took away from us, you know, getting through the round table the way that we needed to. So Kate tells um, Phaedra, you know, we got to take out somebody from their side. And that is CT, um, CT, Trishel, or John. Personally, they should have voted out MJ. They should have voted out MJ. Why? Because MJ is most likely to flip. It should have either been MJ or Sandra that got voted out. Sandra has been loyal down to Phaedra, right? It should have been MJ. She's the most impressionable. Or I would have voted out Trishel. I wouldn't have voted out John, though. John wasn't persuading nobody to do nothing. But they decide to vote out John and Kate made 
Phaedra make a decision. While, you know, I wanted Phaedra to win, obviously Phaedra didn't play the smartest game. She left a lot up to... Uh, she left a lot up to poverty and Dan by way of what to do, who to murder and how to like decide how they were going to play the game. And that hurt her. That hurt her because Phaedra never thought about anything. I've said before too, Phaedra doesn't try to get shields. Phaedra doesn't even try hard in any of the challenges. She really just kind of coast along. So Kate making her make this decision Kind of showed how unskillful Phaedra is at strategy in this game. So, the next morning at breakfast, CT is trying to flesh Phaedra out. You know, who do you think is the traitor? Who do you think it will be? Talking about, all, I bet you all the housewives are going to be safe. We find out that they killed off John. I wasn't mad at it. John didn't bother me. But I, just, I got sick of hearing him talk too. <laughs> to be real with y'all. I got sick of hearing him talk too. So MJ is talking to Kate and Sheree and she wants to convince, she's trying to convince them that Phaedra might be the traitor, that Phaedra is the traitor. Tell Sheree, we both know that we need to vote for Phaedra. Sheree's just sitting there with her dumb spring, summer, September look on her face. And it's like, come on, Sheree, come on, Sheree. Like deer in headlights at all at all times throughout this this entire show. Kate then throws out Sandra's name. I feel like Kate should have threw out Trishel. This is why. If Kate would have thrown out Trishel and been like Trishel is so dead set on Phaedra, 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 Phaedra. But when we look at Trishel, Trishel had the habit of, you know, throwing people's names out there with really absolutely no proof, no concrete, no concrete proof. I think that they would have had a better chance because they would have had Sandra, Phaedra, MJ, Kate, Sheree. Everybody would have voted against Trishel but CT. Kate, I mean, Kate talking about everybody's gameplay, you weren't the smartest either. Going against, trying to get Sandra up out of here is stupid. Stupid. So, MJ's dumbass is like, maybe I'm missing something with with um, with Kate, with uh, Sandra. And talk about some, I think Kate is smarter than me. Oh, Lord, this is why I don't watch Charles the Sunset because if they all act like MJ... Count me out. So Trishel tells CT that all the Bravo girls are going to vote for Phaedra. So CT is like, mm, we might be able to get MJ and Sandra to flip and vote for Phaedra. We um, well, say that the Bravo girls will never vote for Phaedra. So Trishel is like, I'm going to go out there. I said, oh, now you want to go swim with the minorities, huh? We ain't seen Trishel. So much as look at any of these women. Not so much as say hello to them or pass the butter in the morning. But now that you don't have a team and you don't have anybody to close doors with and push people out of the room, now you want to go talk to the minorities. So she comes out, runs up on Kate, Sheree, and MJ, and was like, are y'all ready to talk logic and reason? Girl, the way Trishel would have got cussed out, don't come at me like I'm slow. Don't come at me like I don't have common sense. There's a way to talk to people, and then there's a way that Trishel just did this. Now, the way that Kate was looking her up and down, that's what you deserve. Don't come talking to these people like this. You haven't wanted to talk logic and reason with them the past couple of days because you had the Peter Pals with you. Now that all your homeboys are gone, now you want to be a girl's girl and talk about some you don't feel included. Trishel, kiss my ass and theirs. So we get to the challenge for the day. They have to um, dig in this big pile of dirt, pull out these gold nuggets, um, and then cross the water on these like floating platforms that are separated with space and then drop all the gold nuggets into this scale so that it evens out or tips the scale with the $30,000 like huge um, 
what is that called? It's not a dumbbell. Is that a dumbbell? No, it's not a dumbbell. Y'all know the little, the, the, the weight, okay? So there is one safe, I mean one shield, and in order to for the shield to count, you got to get the shield across too. If you fall in the water, you lose your shield unless you have it in your hand. If you fall in the water, all the gold that you're carrying falls in the water too and is lost. So, as usual, Phaedra's not trying to get a shield or anything. Phaedra is the first to try to get across the platforms. She falls. MJ finds the shield, which I was like, thankfully, Trishel's dumbass doesn't. Trishel, um, MJ falls into the water. Sheree falls. Sandra falls. So Trishel figured out, because Tr Trishel is very tall and thin. She real light in the ass. So Trishel figures out that if I go really fast around through this, then the the platforms aren't going to wobble. Trishel and CT are good at these type of challenges because this is the type of stuff that they do on the challenge. So they're good at these type of activities. So CT and Trishel are able to bank, I think it was like $28,000 um, for them for the final pot. And then MJ was the little engine that could, and she was able to get all the way to the end with her shield. So she is safe for tonight. So we get back to the castle and now we got to try to eat dinner and then see who we going to banish up out of here tonight. So Kate is trying to get CT and MJ to vote for Sandra so she could spare Phaedra. Now, Kate is like the only traitor that has been down for the traitors outside of Phaedra. And by that, I mean, she hasn't been like, even though everybody's saying Phaedra, she's not just going along to get along. She's like actively trying to find a way to help Phaedra out of this situation. So Sandra, who's like always looking, always got her head on a swivel, looks out and sees them talking and was like, I'm about to go on out there. This is why y'all should have said Trishel. Y'all should have left CT out the conversation and voted for Trishel, but that's fine. Because that would make the most sense. That would make the absolute most sense. Or you all try to vote for CT. You got to take one of them out though on that team. It's a numbers game. So Sandra goes outside and Kate is like, okay, cool. We're trying to figure out if we wait to vote Phaedra out tomorrow night because we already know that she is the next faithful, I mean the next traitor. We got to try to figure out who the other traitor is. Sandra was like, I'm with it. Who are you thinking? Kate said, it's really hard. I can't think of who the number two is. I said, oh, girl. Like, here's the thing, Kate. You're not as skillful as you think either. Why wouldn't you say Sheree? Because Sheree's ass isn't out. I just. So inside, we see Sheree pulling Phaedra to the side. And she's like, look. We've been friends for 30 years. I need, I can try to protect you if I know, but I need you to look me in my eyes and tell me if you are a traitor. And Phaedra says she's not. So Sheree is like, who else do you think is a traitor? And she was like, I don't know, maybe CT. And I think in that moment, the way that Sheree didn't really try to put up a fight, Sheree knew. Now, Sheree sat her ass up in that interview and lied and said that she knew that Phaedra was a traitor the entire time. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You know you did, and that's okay, Sheree. I feel like Sheree don't know anything that is going on at all. Sheree's just there. So we get to the round table. Trishel starts off by saying, we are here to find traitors. No shit, Sherlock. We know. We know. So Phaedra was silent when people, she said that Phaedra was silent when people voted for her. And in the past, whenever somebody is a faithful, they're always like, you're going to regret this when you vote for me. You're going to regret this. Phaedra didn't have that type of reaction. Phaedra said, that's ludicrous. You have never had any concrete 
evidence against me. And Trishel has not. Everything that Trishel has said has been a regurgitation from Dan. And then some from poverty. But a lot of it came from what Dan said at the first uh, round table that he threw Phaedra's name into, into the, um, into the ring. So they go around, start to vote. MJ said, uh, or they go around, they're still politicking. MJ says she didn't think Phaedra was a traitor, but, and, but because of her nature and her disposition, she knows that she can like hold a lot and she can carry a lot. Sandra said that it would kill her. If, if she found out that Phaedra was a traitor, but said all the signs were there and said, we'll just have to see if Trishel is right. So they go through the vote and Phaedra said again, there is nothing concrete against her, but she is exhausted and you reach a point where you get tired of fighting. And I, you know what? In that moment, I felt her. Phaedra has been fighting for her life the past three round tables. What more can she say that she hasn't said already? So they're going around voting. Kate was um, in her confessional talking about I'm done fighting for her and then calls her more selfish than skillful in this game. And I was like, damn. And even Phaedra was like, selfish. And Kate was like, yes. And here's the thing, Kate. How was she selfish? That's what I don't understand. Are you calling her selfish because you were trying to fight for her and she didn't want to fight for herself anymore? Like, if anything... You're selfish, Kate. I just, I don't know. I didn't like Kate's ass on Below Deck. I haven't really cared for her on here. Because I feel like she's acting like she don't want to be there in the first place. But, like, you just put a target on your back. Because if you say she's playing more selfish than skillful, <coughs> then that means... <coughs> Sorry, y'all. Then that means... Okay, then that means that you've been, like, working with her or playing alongside her. You just put a target on your back. All you had to do was say Phaedra and be done with it. So, Phaedra goes up to the, um, announce, you know, what she is. And she said that she is a faithful traitor. And what she meant by that is Dan and Poverty threw the other traitors under the bus. Instead of them just taking their licks, they threw the other traitors under the bus. Not once did Phaedra ever even hint that it could be Kate. Even when Dan and uh, Poverty were throwing her under the bus, she never, she never even put their names out there unless she was voting with the masses. Phaedra was a faithful traitor. Um, so then at the end, Sandra asks Kate about the selfish part. L why would you say that? And Kate said, because of all the murder she's done, you know, it's just gross the way she was playing. That doesn't make sense though. If you're thinking that I'm a traitor, yes, I'm going to murder you. That's not playing selfishly. That's playing smart. That's playing the game. Kate, you, you ruined this for yourself. So it seems like the, the faithfuls might win. The Faithfuls might win, and you know what? I'm not even mad at it. I don't want Trishel to win a fucking thing, but but I will be okay if the Faithfuls win over Kate. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.